Hi, fifth grade, Mrs. Pecora back again to finish reading The End of the Witches. I hope you have liked it. I must admit, I'm a bit surprised that he's staying a mouse. I thought he would turn back into a human boy once the witches were gone. But anyways, once again, if you hear snoring, it's my puppy Winston laying next to me, sound asleep, snoring away. So if you hear any weird noises, it's just him. I promise it's not me. All right, so where we last left off, the little boy and his grandmama were talking about how long a mouse lives. And she said he might live about nine years. And he said that would be perfect because he doesn't want to live without his grandmama. So here we go. We're going to finish. I had a little doze after that. I just shut my eyes and thought of nothing and felt at peace with the world. Would you like me to tell you something about yourself that is very interesting my grandmother said yes please grandmama i said without opening my eyes i couldn't believe it at first but apparently it's quite true she said what is i asked the heart of a mouse she said and that means your heart is beating at the rate of 500 times a minute isn't that amazing that's not possible i said opening my eyes wide it is as true as I am sitting here, she said. It is sort of a miracle. That's nearly nine beats every second, I cried, working it out of my head. Correct. Your heart is going so fast, it's impossible to hear the separate beats. All one hears is a soft humming sound. She was wearing a lace dress, and the lace kept tickling my nose. I had to rest my head on my front paws. Have you ever heard my heart humming away, Grandmama? I asked her. Often, she said, I hear it when you are lying very close to me on the pillow at night. The two of us remained silent in front of the fire for a long time after that, thinking about these wonderful things. My darling, she said at last, are you sure you don't mind being a mouse for the rest of your life? I don't mind at all, I said. It doesn't matter who you are or what you look like, so long as somebody loves you. It's off to work we go. For supper that evening, my grandmother had a plain omelet and one slice of bread. I had a piece of that brown Norwegian goat's milk cheese, known as goist, which I had loved even when I was a boy. We ate in front of the fire, my grandmother in her armchair, and me on the table with my cheese on a small plate. Grandmama, I said, now that we have done away with the Grand High Witch, will all the other witches in the world gradually disappear? I'm quite sure they won't, she answered. I stopped chewing and stared at her. But they must, I cried. Surely they must. I'm afraid not, she said. But if she's not there any longer, who are they going, how are they going to get all the money they need? And who is going to give them orders and jazz them up at the annual meetings and invent all their magic formulas for them? When a queen bee dies, there is always another queen in the hive ready to take her place. My grandmother said, it's the same with witches. In the great headquarters where the Grand High Witch lives, there is always another Grand High Witch waiting in the wings to take over should anything happen. Oh no, I cried. That means everything we did was for nothing. Have I become a mouse for nothing at all? We saved the children of England, she said. I don't call that nothing. I know, I know, I cried, but that's not nearly good enough. I feel sure that all the witches of the world would slowly fade away after we got rid of their leader. Now you tell me that everything is going to go on just as before? Not as exactly as before, my grandmother said. For instance, there are no longer any witches in England. That is quite a triumph, isn't it? But what about the rest of the world, I cried. What about America and France and Holland and Germany? What about Norway? You must not think I've been sitting back and doing nothing these last few days, she said. I've been doing a great deal of thought and time to that particular problem. I was looking up at her face when she said this, and all at once I noticed that a secret smile was beginning to spread slowly around her eyes and the corners of her mouth. What are you, why are you smiling, Grandmama? I asked her. I have some rather interesting news for you, she said. What news? Shall I tell it to you from the beginning? Yes, please, I said. I like good news. She had finished her omelet, and I had had enough of my cheese. She wiped her lips with a napkin and said, As soon as we arrived back in Norway, I picked up the telephone and made a call to England. To who in England, Grandmama? To the chief of, uh, 
chief of police in Bournemouth, my darling. I told him I was the chief of police for the whole of Norway and that I was interested in the particular happenings that had taken place recently in the Hotel Magnificent. Now, hang on a second, Grandmama, I said. There's no way an English policeman is going to believe that you are head of the Norwegian police. I am very good at imitating a man's voice, she said. Of course he believed me. The policeman in Bournemouth was honored to get a call from the chief of police for the whole of Norway. So what did you ask him? I asked him for the name and address of the lady who had been living in room 454 in the Hotel Magnificent, the one who disappeared. You mean the Grand High Witch? I cried. Yes, my darling. And did he give it to you? Naturally, he gave it to me. One policeman will always help another policeman. By golly, you've got nerve, Grandmama. I wanted her address, my grandmother said. But did he know her address? He did indeed. They had found her passport in her room and her address was in it. It was also in the hotel register. Everyone who stays in a hotel has to put a name and address in the book. But surely the Grand High Witch wouldn't have put her real name and address in the register, I said. Why ever not, my grandmother said. Nobody in the world had the faintest idea who she was except the other witches. Whenever she went, people simply knew her as a nice lady. You, my darling, and you alone were the only non-witch ever to see her with the mask off. Even in her home district, the village where she lived, people knew her as a kindly and very wealthy baroness who gave large sums of money to charity. I have checked up on that. I was getting excited now. And the address you got, Grandmama? That must have been the secret headquarters of the Grand High Witch. It still is, my grandmother said. And that will be where the new Grand High Witch is certain to be living at this very moment with a retinue of special assistant witches. Important rulers are always surrounded by a large retinue of assistants. Where is the headquarters, Grandmama? I cried. Tell me quick where it is. It is a castle my grandmother said. And the fascinating thing is that the castle will, in the castle will be all the names and addresses of all the witches in the world. How else could a grand high witch run her business? How else could she summon the witches of various countries to their annual meetings? Where is the country, Grandmama? I cried impatiently. Which country? Tell me quick. Guess, she said. Norway, I cried. Right the first time, she answered. High up in the mountains above a small village. This was thrilling news. I did a little dance of excitement on the tabletop. My grandmother was getting pretty worked up herself. And now she heaved herself out of the chair and began pacing up and down the room, thumping the carpet with her stick. So we have work to do, you and I, she cried out. We have a great task ahead of us. Thank heavens you are a mouse. A mouse can go anywhere. All I have to do is put you down somewhere near the Grand High Witch's Castle and you will very easily be able to get inside and creep around looking and listening to your heart's content. I will, I will, I answered. No one will ever see me. Moving about in a big castle will be child's play compared with going into a crowded kitchen full of cooks and waiters. You could spend days in there if necessary, my grandmother cried. In her excitement, she was waving her stick all over her place. And suddenly she knocked over a tall and very beautiful vase that went crashing to the floor and smashed into a million pieces. Forget it, she said. It's only Ming. You could spend weeks in the castle if you wanted to and they'd never know you were there. I myself would get a room in the village and you could sneak out of the castle and have supper with me every night and tell me what is going on. I could, I could, I cried. And inside the castle, I could go snooping around simply everywhere. But your main job, of course, my grandmother said, would be destroy, destroy every witch in the place. That really would be the end of the whole organization. Me destroy them? I cried. How would I do that? Can't you guess? She said. Tell me, I said. Mouse maker, my grandmother shouted. Formula 86 delayed action mouse maker all over again. You will feed it to everyone in the castle by putting drops of it in your food. You do remember the recipe, don't you? Every bit of it, I answered. Do you mean we're going to make it ourselves? Why not, she cried. If they can make it, so can we. It's a question of knowing what goes into it. Who's going to climb up the tall trees to get the Gruntle's eggs, I asked her. I will, she cried. I will do it myself. There's plenty of life left in this old hag yet. I think I better do that part, Grandmama. You might become a cropper. Those are just details, she cried, waving her stick again. We shall let nothing stand in our way. 
And what happens after that? I asked her. After the new Grand High Witch and everyone else in the castle is completely turned into mice. Then the castle will be completely empty and then I shall come in and join you in. Wait, I cried. Hold on, Grandmama. I've just had a nasty thought. What nasty thought, she said. When the mouse maker turned me into a mouse, I said, I didn't just become an ordinary mouse that you can catch with mouse traps. I became a talking, thinking, intelligent mouse person who wouldn't go near a mouse trap. My grandmother stopped dead in her tracks. She already knew what was coming next. Therefore, I went on, if we use the mouse maker to turn the new Grand High Witch and all the other witches in the castles into mice, the whole place will be swarming with very clever, very nasty, very dangerous talking, thinking mouse witches. Though I'll be witches in mouse closing, and that, I added, could be very horrible indeed. By golly, you're right, she cried. That never occurred to me. I couldn't possibly take on a castle full of mouse witches, I said. Nor could I, she said. They'd have to be got rid of at once. They'd have to be smashed and bashed and chopped up into little pieces exactly as they were in the Hotel Magnificent. I'm not doing that, I said. I would, couldn't anyways. I don't think you could either, Grandmama. And mouse traps wouldn't be the slightest use. And by the way, I added, the Grand High Witch who did me in was wrong about the mouse traps, wasn't she? Yes, yes, my grandmother said impatiently. But I'm not concerned with that Grand High Witch. She's been chopped up long ago by the hotel chef. It's the new Grand High Witch we've got to deal with. Now, the one in the castle and all her assistants. A grand high witch is bad enough when she's disguised as a lady. But think of where she could, what she could do if she were a mouse. She could go anywhere. I got it, I shouted, leaping about a foot in the air. I've got the answer. Tell me, my grandmother snapped. The answer is cats, I shouted. Bring on the cats. My grandmother stared at me. Then a great grin spread over her face and she shouted, It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Shove a half a dozen cats into the castle, I cried, and they'll kill every mouse in the place in five minutes. I don't care how clever they are. You are a magician, my grandmother shouted, starting to wave her stick around once again. Look out for vases, Grandmama. To heck with the vases, she shouted. I'm so thrilled I don't care if I break the lot. Just one thing, I said. You've got to make absolutely sure I'm well out of the way myself before you put the cats in. That's a promise, she said. What will we do after the cats have killed all the mice, I asked. We'll take all the cats back to the village, and then you and I will have the castle completely to ourselves. And then, I said, and then we shall go through the records and get the name and addresses of all the witches in the whole wide world. And after that, I said, quivering with excitement, and after that, my darling, the greatest task of all will begin for you and me. We shall pack our bags and go traveling all over the world. In every country we visit, we shall seek out the houses where the witches are living. We shall find each house one by one, and having found it, you will creep inside and leave your little drops of deadly mouse maker in the bread, or in the cornflakes, or in the rice pudding, or whatever food you see lying about. It will be a triumph, my darling, a colossal, unbeatable triumph. We shall do it entirely by ourselves, just you and me. That will be our work the rest of our lives. My grandmother picked me up off the table and kissed me on the nose. Oh, my goodness me, we're going to be busy these next few weeks and months and years, she cried. I think we are, I said, but what fun and what excitement it's going to be. You can say that again, my grandmother cried, giving me another kiss. I can't wait to get started. All right, boys and girls, that's the end. I hope you enjoyed the book. Didn't turn out how I expected. I'm, like I said, I'm surprised he stayed a mouse, but that's kind of cool. And now they're going to go about getting rid of all the other witches. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned to see what we're reading next time in library. Bye-bye.